Hi, it's Petty Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And today I'm going to be using my MISTI tool, which stands for the most incredible stamping tool ever by My Sweet Petunia, along with some very detailed Penny Black stamps. And the two of these combined together make for an awesome technique. And I call this technique scenic stamping with color layering. And I actually learned this from watching a video by Virginia Liu. And I'm going to link to her video down in the YouTube description box. You'll definitely want to check that out and the stamp I'm using today is a new stamp by Penny Black it's called down the lane and this stamp can be used to make a Christmas winter type scene and today I'm actually using it to make a fall everyday type of scene so this is a look at the card that we'll be creating today and again all of that stamping in the background other than what you see the sentiment and the die cut is one layer stamping. So here I've mounted that stamp to my MISTI tool and I'm coloring onto it using Tombow dual brush pens. And I'm starting here with just this little bit of sort of background trees and I'm coloring on those and I'm gonna stamp them a couple of times just to make sure I get it as dark as I want it to be and pick up all of the details. So the color layering is using multiple colors and also multiple times stamping that to get the effect that you like. So now I'm adding a little bit of rusty hinge down to the bottom portion of the stamp and I'll stamp that once and then I'm going to continue to layer that as we go and this, this technique is so fun because it's just exciting to see the scene start to come together just by inking and stamping no coloring or painting it's just fun stamping over and over and there's lots of different color variations that you could do especially with this particular stamp and what the MISTI is doing is allowing that to stamp in the exact same place every single time which is why we can put layers and layers and layers and do different portions of the stamp at different times so now I'm adding a little bit darker color some vintage photo distress ink down here at the bottom and just around certain areas. And here we go with that vintage photo. So before that was just the rusty hinge I did several times and now I'm adding the vintage photo. And you can actually apply that with an ink blending tool. So I didn't want that to have a harsh edge where the vintage photo ink stopped. So I'm just putting a little bit of ink onto the stamp using my ink blending tool and a foam pad. And I got a little ink up at the top. That's no problem because when we stamp all those branches and trees, that's just gonna be covered up with more stamping. So here I'm putting that ink on, I did with the ink blending tool and the foam pad and stamped that. Now I'm going to apply some more of that vintage photo ink to the branches and the trees. And I'm gonna darken these up quite a bit, but because there's so much detail on the trees and the branches, I'm first putting a layer of the vintage photo ink on them. And next I'll go in with the Tombow dual brush markers to really darken that up. But because I've stamped the whole thing using the vintage photo, if there are areas that I miss with the markers, it's all going to look okay and blend. It won't look like I missed part of the stamp because I have stamped the whole thing with that light layer. So I'm working pretty quickly and just focusing on coloring here on the branches. I turn my marker to the side and I can quickly color that in. And I'll have all of the exact colors of inks and markers listed at the end of the video in a complete supply list. I'm using just my fingertip to wipe off the ink from the little bird. I wanna keep that clear of the marker ink so that I can do it in its own color. And I'm just gonna keep building up these layers. And even though I'm using the same color marker, because I'm gonna add another layer, it's just gonna keep getting darker and darker as we go. And I prefer whether I'm painting or coloring, I always like to start light and go darker because if you go too dark to start with, you can't go back and lighten it up, but you can keep adding color until you achieve the darkness that you like. Now I'm not worried about cleaning my stamp between each impression because I'm using the same colors over and over. But you can see there, I only applied the marker to a portion of the trunks and the trees so that those portions start to get darker and darker and darker than the rest of the tree that extend onward. Now I'm adding the little fence posts with another marker and I'll get them again here just to darken them up a little bit more and you can see on the stamped side that the scene is really starting to come together.
and I wanted a little bit of shadow in the back so I just did some green that will layer on top of that orange rusty hinge color. And now I'm ready to do my bird and so I'm coloring the bird, just the bird with the blue and I'll do a couple impressions. actually several impressions. <laughs> I want to make sure that I have it just right and the darkness of color so that it really pops even next to those dark brown branches. So I'm going to clean off my stamp now and so I'm just using a baby wipe to clean that off but I'm not moving anything. I'm not moving the paper on the right or the stamp on the misty. And to make sure that's completely dry I'll just take a baby wipe and then also a paper towel just to make sure none of the the moisture from the baby wipe is on there. And now I'm going to emboss this. So I'm going to use the Versamark ink and before I do that I'm going to just put an anti-static bag on top of this so that the embossing powder only sticks where we stamp. And now I'm going to grab that Versamark ink pad and apply that all over the stamp. Had a few little fuzzes there from the baby wipe. Make sure I move those. And then I'm going to stamp this down. Again, because of the misty, it's going to stamp in the exact same place. And just because there's so much detail to the stamp, I'm going to do it twice. Probably don't need to, but just to be safe, I will stamp that twice with the Versamark ink. And then I'm going to sprinkle that with clear embossing powder. And what this does is it's going to seal in all of those colors that we've stamped. And we can then add ink to the background and the embossed areas will resist that ink. That way the color remains strong and the inking to the background basically sits behind the stamping. So I'm going to go in here with that wild honey and you can see that that does not affect any of the stamping that we've done because that stamped area is resisting that distress ink, the wild honey distress ink. And I'm now adding a little bit of the rusty hinge. So that's the same color that we stamped with, but because I'm putting a light layer, it creates a really nice tone, a to tone on tone effect. I'm going to use some crushed olive. And this is just ink blending tool with foam pad and I'm sort of flicking that upward. And I wanted just a little bit darker green. So now I'm using Olive Grove and this is by Memento. And I'll add that also up on this left hand side a little bit. And then some Danube Blue Memento ink. and then also some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Ink. I just love how because we embossed that the stamping resists all of these inks and you can create this multicolored scene all one layer and with tons and tons of detail from the stamp and the misty really makes this totally possible. It's so fun. And this is just a little bit of Vintage Photo Distress Ink kind of going into that pathway. And then to remove any of the excess ink from the embossed areas, I'm just buffing that with a dry paper towel. And here's a little detail shot of our blue bird enjoying this fall scene. And a look at the finished card. To finish it off, I added a little bit of thread, a stamp sentiment, and a die cut sentiment. And then I also wanted to show you a variation using the same stamp and creating a winter card. So I just embossed this with white and added my distress inks to the background. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter, all linked below. And I'm also going to link to the ways you can connect with My Sweet Petunia, the makers of the Misty. Here's a list of all the supplies used. Mm -hmm.